Afternoon everybody. Movie review time. Mike Lee's film of Peter Lou. What's it like? Is it any good? Should you spend your money? Stick around and you'll find out. Uh, by the way, as I say at the beginning of all of these videos, if you like these videos you can subscribe and you can give me a thumbs up and if you don't like the videos you can give me a thumbs down but the thumbs down button doesn't work so don't bother to use it and if you're watching on your telly and uh, there isn't I believe a subscribe button and there isn't a thumbs up button and I don't think you can make any comments either so you can keep them to yourself if you want to make some snide remark about what a toss I am you're gonna to have to go on your computer anyway enough of that it's a miserable November day, it is pouring with rain and it's time to make a video. Bit of a delay this one. Uh, it's Monday today and I went to see the film on Tuesday evening, Dulwich Picture House, with my lovely wife as we often like to do. Now let me say first of all that Mike Lee is a fabulous filmmaker who has made some great films and some great TV programs in his time. Who can forget Nuts in May? Uh, Abigail's Party with the great Alison Steadman, that wonderful dissection of middle-class boys from the 1980s, probably. Uh, who can forget Secrets and Lies? Who can forget um, Life is Sweet? Who can forget Another Year? He has made some fabulous films. And Peter Lou is a very important subject. I didn't know a great deal about it, um, I'll be honest. Uh, it was about a massacre of uh, people in 1819, which took place in the north of England, I believe Manchester. Uh, a large group of people who were attending a, not merely a demonstration, more a gathering, a talk if you like. Um, and they were agitating, that's not quite the right word, but they were agitating for... Uh, increased suffrage, uh, more of the vote for more of the people. And it resulted in uh, misbehaviour, no that's not a good enough word, it uh, resulted in a massacre by the powers that be of large numbers of innocent people. Interestingly enough it doesn't say uh, in the film, either at the beginning or at the end, about how many people were killed or wounded, and I actually haven't bothered to look it up on Wikipedia, but it was quite a lot. Anyway, all of this preamble is kind of me avoiding talking about the film, isn't it? I've said what a great director Mike Lee is, I've said what an important event in British history uh, what the uh, people were trying to do at Peterloo. I've said what a disgraceful thing it is, what the authorities did to the people at Peterloo, but I've avoided talking about the film. And why have I avoided talking about the film? Well, I didn't like it. My wife liked it. Um, I felt I, in some respects, I should have liked it. It was, you know, it's, it's a worthy subject. My, my wife calls me a terrible snob, and I am a terrible snob. Uh, I don't, I don't deny that. But I, I just thought, I just thought the film was dreary. And the trouble is, when you've been uh, kind of exposed to, say, Monty Python sketches or more recently Black Adder sketches, it's difficult to watch a program like that, like this, and not see echoes of a, a, a Monty Python sketch or of a Black Adder sketch and there are a lot of characters who are like Tony Robinson. Now they're all intensely worthy working class, hard working, poor, hand to mouth people. I'm not a snob about people like that, don't get me wrong. But I just don't like a film that tells me what to think. Uh, you may have seen my review of uh, James O'Brien's not very good book about how to be right in a world gone wrong. And I felt that that book was telling me what to think. And I don't like things that tell me what to think. And this film was telling me what to think. It was telling me that the, the, the working classes were great people and the ruling classes were naughty people. Now, I know that's true, but I just don't want it shoved down my throat all the time. And these um, working classes... They had very broad northern accents. Again, you'll think I'm a terrible snob. Nothing wrong with northern accents. But again, it's quite difficult 
to watch a film which is full of people with really broad northern accents and not think of some kind of comedy sketch as if the film is making fun of those people. Now it isn't, but that's somehow it comes across. And the the ruling classes, the uh, uh, aristocrats and the, and the uh, magistrates are all caricatures of the ruling classes at the time. Now they may well all have sounded like tossers, they may all have looked like tossers, they all may have behaved like tossers, and certainly they seem to have done. But unless there is some kind of uh, attempt to un understand both sides of the story, and I don't want to go back to James O'Brien about this, but unless there's some attempt to understand what the Brexiters felt like when they voted for Brexit and why they felt like it, just kind of standing on the other side of the room and hurling insults or throwing rocks at them isn't going to work. And, and Peter Lou was a bit like that. It was Mike Lee standing on one side of the room, the working class side of the room, and why not, and throwing rocks at the work at the uh, uh, the ruling classes, and why not? But it just it lacked something for me. It was just endless speechifying. Now, a film should be composed of dialogue. People shouldn't talk in speeches. They shouldn't uh, declaim all the time. They should be uh, people who interact with each other in normal speech of their day-to-day -day activity and I didn't feel that this film did that. The last 15-20 uh, minutes or so, which is about the massacre itself, are very powerful and very well handled and the film really came alive to me at, at that point and almost justified the preceding virtual two hours of me looking at my watch and glancing at my wife and saying, can, can we go now? So those last 15 minutes. And there are some, some beautiful elegiac scenes of northern countryside and the whole film is beautifully shot, it's beautifully filmed, the costumes are superb, the the, the props are superb. It is a very fine recreation or evocation of the north of England in 1819. But it just lacked those extra bits that, to me, a, a film needs to work as entertainment. Okay, you can you can make a documentary if you want to if you want to lecture people. But if you want to, to entertain people, if you want people to uh, in, enjoy themselves while they're listening and agreeing to your message, then I think you need to you think you, I think you need to entertain people. And there is no humor at all in this film, not one jot. Now I found a, a certain amount of humor because I was I was laughing at, at some of these people and I was laughing at you know, Maxine Peake rubbing gravel into her hair and these other characters who were so poor they had nothing to eat. I mean, there, there was a certain amount of humour there. Unintentional, yes, but but humour nonetheless. Now, the film uh, starts on the Battle of Waterloo with a character played by, and I'm just going to look at my notes here, David Morst. Uh, never heard of him before. Uh, and he does a... Uh, a kind of a twitch, twitch like that all the way through the film, which uh, I assume is is supposed to indicate post-traumatic stress syndrome, which of course was not understood at the Battle of Waterloo, but it's widely understood now and is a, a, an accepted um, affliction for those people who have fought in in battles. So he is on he is on the Battle of Waterloo, and of course he's on the winning side at Waterloo, and he wears his red uh, red red jacket. Uh, and the start of the film shows him, well, he appears to be walking home from Waterloo, which is in Belgium, to uh, Manchester, and quite a long way, um, 400, 450 miles. So he's quite tired when he gets to Manchester. In fact, he's totally knackered. And he, he falls into his mother's arms and then falls asleep on, on the bed. Now, he is one of those, and you won't be at all surprised by this plot, spoiler, uh, who is killed at the end. And killed at the end, still wearing his red jacket, still twitching in a, in a post-traumatic stress syndrome kind of way. 
Uh, now, the massacre took place in 1819, and the Battle of Waterloo, as you well know, took place in, in 1815. So, in the intervening four years, he does not remove his jacket. Now, I know they're, I know they're poor people, I know they don't have many clothes to wear, but you, you would think that he would perhaps change his breeches, or even clean his breeches, or, or change his, his, his jacket. So, what, what the film is, is showing you is that the, uh, the, this, this soldier who survives the Battle of Waterloo is killed by the very same um, ruling classes uh, who sent him to fight and win at Waterloo. Uh, he is then defeated and killed by those ruling classes at the Battle of Peterloo. So his, uh, his death is, is not surprising. Um, and it's it's a requirement of of the film, if you like. But it was a rather rather obvious requirement of the film, I thought. I also thought that the uh, yeomanry, uh, who are the uh, cavalry, who attack and and cut down in rather graphic and and unpleasant ways these these poor people who are agitating for increased suffrage, are all quite old. Um, which I thought was was it may well be a, a historical fact, but I was I was curious as to why they all seemed quite old as they were floating around, floating, uh, galloping around on their horses with sabers and and cutting people to bits. They're quite old and quite fat, actually, a bit like uh, middle-aged cyclists. Um, actually, they're nothing like middle-aged cyclists. Sorry, I'll, I'll try and no, I'm not going to edit it because I don't know how to edit these films. But anyway, so. Is it a good film? No, it's not really a good film. It's an important topic, yes. But should you see a film because it's about an important topic? I'm uneasy about that. Um, is it well done? Yes, it, it's well done. Uh, is it exciting entertainment? No, it's not exciting entertainment. It's a bit like um, I used. I was for my sins at the University of Essex between 1976 and 1979 which was a deeply uh, and in some respects quite unpleasantly political place but I was a very political person in in those days and the the Socialist Workers Party used to be very very big they were big on campus and Peterloo is, is a bit like being trapped in in a bar with a group of socialist workers people who, who just berate and, and abuse you and bore you to tears so if you can get through the first uh, two hours or so of being bored to tears by people from the Socialist Workers Party and get through to the last 15 minutes which are very well done very moving uh, and well handled and the film is to be congratulated that it knows when to finish most of these films they drag on and on and sorry, I was just glancing out of my notes there. They're not, they're not. I haven't written this review, by the way. I'm just. Uh, I, I do make a few notes about actors who appear in the film. And in fact, glancing at my notes just reminds me of the fact that one of the people who appears in this film as the Prince Regent is Tim McKinnery, and that, of course, reinforces the whole Black Adder feel of the film, because Tim McKinnery was in uh, Black Adder. Um, so. Should you go and see it? Probably not. Um, should you spend your money? Probably not. Uh, is there a better film to see? Yeah, Star is Born. Good film. They Shall Not Grow Old. Superb film. First Man? Mm, okay, but not great. So, there you are. See you next time.